So welcome to Tar Heel Time Out. I'm joined today by Woody Durham, the voice of the Tar Heels. What do you what do you think about when when you hear that, the voice of the Tar Heels? Well, it's it's now the thing that defines my career and I wasn't sure I was going to be doing it this long or that I would even do it a little bit longer. Uh, when I started, uh, it was 1971 in the 71 football season when John Bunning was an all-ACC linebacker on Bill Dooley's first ACC championship team. Matter of fact, there were eight all-conference players on that team. And then, of course, the basketball team that year went to the Final Four out in Los Angeles, got upset by Florida State in the uh, semifinals and then beat Louisville for third place when there was a third place game played. But I had uh, really, I was in television at the time with WFMY TV in Greensboro. And I had really wanted to be the voice of uh, ACC football and basketball on television. That was my goal because I really had not thought about doing games on, on the radio. And a guy by the name of Bill Curry, who was probably more famously known as the mouth of the South. Bill was out of Charlotte, WSOC radio and television, and he was doing the games at that time. And he left in February of 71 to take a TV job with KDKA in Pittsburgh. And I thought Bill would do the games until, well, I knew he wasn't going to retire. I thought he'd do them until he died, to be honest with you. And, and as I say, I had no, uh, no aspirations. It was not on my radar or anything. And, Homer Rice was the athletic director then, and Homer called me one day in Greensboro and said, Woody, how about driving down tomorrow and have lunch with me? I'd like to talk to you about our games. And to be a nice guy, I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. So I did, and it was really interesting because the next day when I walked into his office, and I have a pretty good idea, Susan Strobel, who was the administrative assistant to the athletic director for a number of years, first uh, Chuck Erickson, then uh, uh, Coach Rab and finally Homer Rice, and she also worked for John Swafford some before she retired. And I'd known Susan, and Susan knew I went to school at Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I think she probably told Homer, why didn't he give me a call? And so when I walked in the office and he got up to shake my hand and welcome me, he said, uh, I found out something interesting about you yesterday. And I said, really, what's that? He said, I found out you went to school here. And I laughed and I said, well, Homer, if I've been doing ACC basketball with Jim Thacker and Bones McKinney for four years on ACC television and you didn't know till yesterday that I went to school here, then I've been doing a heck of a job staying neutral. <laughs> and we had a good laugh on it. But then I got interested in it and decided I'd try to get it. And Bill Dooley was a football coach then and Coach Smith uh, was a basketball coach and he had been named head coach while I was in school in the summer of 1961. And I called them both and I said, if I try to go for this, will you give me your support? And they both said they would and they did. And so that's how it all got started. And uh, I had no idea it would be going on uh, this long, but it's certainly now the thing that, you know, sort of defines my career. And, and of course, the team's success has been the reason for that because uh, they've been extremely successful. We've had our disappointments, but we've had a a uh, few more good times and we've had disappointments to be sure. So you've been doing this since the 60s. 39 years in my 39th year. 39 years. That's incredible. What's, what have, what's changed the most in the business um, for you particularly over that time? Uh, what has changed the most? Uh, satellites would be the first thing that I would say because uh, you know we have an awful lot of people and, th and this started years ago. It, what, it's not just me but this started years ago where people uh, like to watch the games on television and listen to them on the radio. Carolina, when I was uh, in, in the late 1950s during the run, the perfect run by the 57 team of 32 and 0, uh, WUNC TV was asked to start putting some of those games on the air. Well, the first one they put on the air, they had audio with it, play by play audio. And the radio stations, there were no set networks back in those days. There were a lot of radio stations that went around and broadcasted an assortment of college basketball games. They'd be in Chapel Hill, say, on a Wednesday night, and on Thursday night they might be in Raleigh. Uh, Saturday night they might be in Durham or Old Wake Forest, where the Deacons were playing at that time before they moved to Winston-Salem. And uh, so there were a lot of people, and all those radio stations, they really got mad. And I can understand why, because here was public television, the state-owned educational station on the campus of the University of North Carolina, coming in and taking audience away from them. So they had a quick meeting and they allowed as to how WNC-TV would televise other games, but they would only televise the video 
and they would put natural sound behind it. And they would run uh, streamers across the bottom of the screen telling people to get the audio they had to tune into their favorite radio station carrying the game. And so that worked very, very well for everybody concerned. And they called it broad vision. And uh, so when satellites came along, people would, uh, who still like to do that because they felt like we had a better feel and knew more about, say, the Tar Heels than television announcers did coming in and just, you know, being here less than a day and then trying to do the game. And so they wanted to hear the games while they watched them. Well, satellites made that difficult to do because a lot of times the, the radio audio, because we had only one satellite jump, was getting there well ahead of the television picture, which had two and sometimes three satellite jumps. And so satellites, the big change. And uh, then, of course, uh, before that, it was, uh, you know, videotape. And uh, now there's hardly any place we can go that we can't do things with wireless microphones and that sort of thing. So the electronic end of the business has, has really been the, in the big change through all these years. Yeah. You think you could, imagine, could have imagined any of this stuff when you started? I don't think so, particularly not the, not the satellites, you know. And uh, now to see high definition, and they need two tractor trailer units to come in to, to give you high definition. But high definition is probably going to have the greatest impact on televised sports than anything else because it really does. I mean, you talked about before being in the game. That's what high definition does. High definition really puts you in the game. Yeah. And as long as professional teams and college teams, for that matter, see fit to keep raising ticket prices, I'm concerned about what the impact on uh, what the revenue that particularly college teams need to generate. For example, at Carolina, Football and basketball needs to generate a lot of revenue because they are basically supporting 26 other varsity sports teams here. Mm -hmm. And uh, But high definition really does put you into the game. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what impact that has over the next few years.